Welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Uh, today we're going to be working on how to create custom ore. We did do this in a previous tutorial, but I realized that uh, I didn't actually make a procedure for dropping experience. So if you want to just skip to the procedure part, then you can do so at the time code provided on the screen. But uh, I'll be going through everything from start to finish. So first off, we need to create or import uh, a block and item texture for this to work. Um, we're gonna be making something similar to how a diamond ore functions. So it's gonna be dropping an item and uh, we're not gonna be able to use uh, the mechanics for fortune because we don't actually have um, any procedure to test for an enchantment level or an enchantment yet. I did suggest it though. So I'm going to leave the um, document here uh, for you guys on Mediafire with the workspace and textures and everything so you guys can see how everything works. But uh, I'll do the tutorial and uh, we need to first make a new block and I'm just gonna call it Northwest Trees Gaming for the um, prefix and then the block for the element and then Ruby or. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna select the block texture in the red square and then select red field only. Uh, it doesn't have transparency, so don't do transparency as you can see here. Uh, so just leave it as solid. Now uh, luminescence is set to zero, so you don't want transparency and you don't want luminescence. Uh, luminescence is down here, so it's already set to zero by default, that's fine. And light up Authenticity, uh, just leave that to 255, that will make it a solid block. And we want to set the material to rock, uh, so make sure it's set to rock by default. I think it's set to rock by default, so just select rock. And then set the sound on step to stone. So that's good, tick rate's fine, and you want to make sure that it's a pickaxe uh, for the tool that it can destroy. Uh, creative tab for building blocks is fine and blast resistance or resistance that is 15 for diamond ore and most other ores uh, hardness is three so set that to three and you want to give it a gui name before you can move on we'll get back to the item dropping mechanic in a second uh, also make sure you have silk touch enabled. Uh, you want to set the uh, harvest level for the item to be able to break it to iron pickaxe for diamond. So we're gonna set that to two for iron, uh, for an iron pickaxe. And that looks all good. And we're not gonna worry about particles or anything like that. We're gonna go here. Now I can never remember um, what the frequency on chunks and frequency on specific chunks is actually, which one's for the vein and which one is for the rarity on chunks. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to figure out on your own. Um, can't really remember and it would make more sense if they said vein for one of them rather than chunk or chunks. Um, I would think that uh, chunk would be the, the vein, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, also, the uh, level is between 0 and 16 for diamonds, so you want to uh, select 1 and 16 for the ore, and uh, minimum height is 1 and maximum height is 16. Uh, generate and world, check that box and click next. So next we need to create the item. Uh, we're gonna create a new item and give it a tag and the element type, so item, and then the name Ruby. 
or whatever you want and then what you want to do is select your item texture and uh, by default everything's pretty much set to go for a or so you don't need to make any changes here just give it a GUI name and uh, you'll be fine so yeah uh, you, you do need a GUI name so uh, set it to Ruby or whatever you want for your or and now that we got that in place what we can do is um, go back to our block and what we're going to do is well if I type the block in alright so go back to our block and check the doesn't drop itself and select our new item texture or new element which is the item and uh, you can adjust how much it drops here and um, we're just going to leave it for one because diamond does drop only one item and uh, now we want to create our procedure. We don't actually have our procedure right now, so we're going to create that uh, next. All right, so now that we have a procedure made, um, what we want to do is add a if statement to create a condition. And uh, we're going to add a logic operator for equal to or greater than. And um, next we want a math operator, but uh, we need a random possibility because that's what we're going to be determining if or, or experience drops or not. So then we want a math operator and set that to minimum for the time being. Um, I did figure out how it all works before I actually tested it. So you want a value here and uh, set that to 1 for now so you don't get confused and set that to 0 0.66 and that will be our basic um, layout for our experience dropping. Now I did take some more time to think on how it was supposed to be formatted and set up and we'll be alterating it just a little bit. Now what you do want to do though is have a couple conditions uh, if else and else and first off we need to spawn an experience orb and uh, 2 is actually a good number for a high value for experience. It's um, not too much, but it's uh, uh, not too little either. So we're going to end up setting that back to two in a second. Uh, so just clone the random possibility part and bring that over down to the next else if statement. Uh, set the values to something lower. Like I said, though, we will be changing this in um, a second, though. And um, we also want to make the possibility lower for the experience to drop. So basically what's going to happen here is that a random possibility between 1 and 0 will happen. And what we want it to do is determine if it's between a number um, section and if, if it is between that number section then it will uh, spawn an experience or but if it's not part of that section then we want it to spawn at a different section or to chest for a different section and if it's not part of that section then what we want to do is just have something not happen so well we still want something to happen but in order for it to work but we don't want anything to actually be done so the easiest way around that is to um, create a variable a local variable and uh, set it to a number and what we're going to do is just give it a variable name and uh, basically what we're going to do is if it does not equal either one of those two conditions, it's going to set this variable to zero every time. So it's basically the catch. So if it doesn't have any value between 
A or B, then it will just do C. And if it is between A, and uh, then it will do the condition. If it's C, then it will do the condition. But if it's not A or B, then it will do C, so if that makes sense. So with this current setup, we need to alterate our things just a slight. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to set the um, symbol here to equal to or greater than and we're going to set this variable to 0.33 and 0.66 like so and we're going to set that to 0.66 and we're going to set this to equal to or greater than and we're also going to set this to 1 and we're going to set that the to maximum and this to maximum so basically what's going here is um, it will test to see if it's uh, between uh, the random numbers between 0.66 and a maximum of 1. And if that's true, then it will drop 2 experience. But if it's not true, then it will test to see if uh, option B is available, if the random number is equal to or greater than 3 and or 33 and if it's or 33 and between 0.33 and a maximum of 0.66 so if it's between B then it will execute um, it will spawn one experience orb but if it's not either of those so it's if, if it's that one percentage where it's not any of that then it will not do anything. So now that we got uh, that all sorted out with the procedure, make sure to compile it, and then you want to go to the block, the or block uh, procedures, and set when block destroyed by player. You can also do when block uh, destroyed by explosion as well, and add that procedure there. And um, then you just want to make sure you compile that and then we'll go into the Minecraft world and test it out. So now that we have uh, survival and a few blocks spawned down because I didn't really want to find the ore generated somewhere within the world and it looks like we have a small forest fire over there. Uh, anyhow, uh, as you can see it does drop some experience and uh, it doesn't drop experience every time with that uh, procedure. Um, actually, it might be dropping a little bit too much, um, or not dropping enough experience, so I don't know. You might want to play around with your percentages a little bit, depending on how you want your mod set up. Uh, it will take a little bit of math trying to figure out the right uh, experience for your mod, but uh, for you know a basic mod that just wants to drop some experience, uh, not experience every time, then this will probably be work just for you with the exact same settings and stuff. Um, it doesn't seem too overpowered or anything, so um, I would probably use it in a mod if I ever created one. Uh, outside of that, that's all that I have to show today. Uh, next week we'll be working on something different, so uh, definitely tune in for that. Thank you for watching my video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that little silver bell for notifications. You can also go to my Google Plus page. I use that as a feed for all my new videos that I publish. If you want to go a little bit further in supporting me, uh, you can also go to my website and do a one-time donation on the donation page, or you can subscribe to me on Patreon and, um, and get content earlier than anyone else on YouTube. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, definitely comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your questions or comments. And uh, if I don't get back to you right away, then I might be a little bit busy at the moment, but I will do my best to get back to uh, as many people as I can, as with uh, the time that I do have. Uh, thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you next time.